So welcome to our YouTube series. It's called Response. And we're gonna talk about different aspects of indigenous identity and kind of talk about what things we have in common and what our difference, differences are and what makes us unique, right? So it's gonna be fun. We got all these girls here that are representing different tribes from different areas of the country. And um, we just figured it would be fun to kind of connect we're a very diverse group of indigenous women. This gives us an opportunity to like talk about where we come from and how different we are, but also our similarities and how that's important being native and how cool it is to be native. And since there's all like a four of us, it gives us different looks from different aspects, not just one sided, one side of one native experience, but four different sides. And I think that adds like us connecting with our audience, whether you're native or non-native. You know, if you're native, you can kind of relate to our stories. And you know, if not, then you're kind of learning a little bit about us and where we come from. Yes. Yeah. I like that piece. Uh, me and my friend, when we were together last time when I was in Montana, we like heard, uh, <laughs> and my friend, she, she's uh, Northern Cheyenne, my best friend. And, but she still uses hope too, like even though it's more like a Blackfeet thing. And um, our other friend, we were just like having conversation and then our other friend, he was in the bathroom and he, we, he like slammed on the to like the toilet seat fell like really loud. And me and my friend literally stopped at the same time and we both were like, ho, oh, at the same time. <laughs> and we, we could not stop laughing because we literally like stopped our conversation to say, ho, oh. <laughs> and then we like kept going. And she was like, you even had to have some, it's like a breathy ho too. It wasn't just like, <laughs> but like, you really don't know how to explain like when to use it unless it's like in conversation or it's like part of your, <laughs> yeah. I think one of my favorite words that are, I think I use a lot too is wah, you know, like you mess up <laughs> something and you're like wah. <laughs> I like caught myself saying that earlier today. Like, I guess like I saw this meme. It was like, whenever you're around non-natives, um, they'll be like, oh, like, can you teach us some words from your language? Like, do you know how to, can you teach me to speak Indian? Like, stuff like that. So, like, obviously we had to take Dakota language, like, as part of our class, like, in high school. And so I would learn, I knew, like, all, like how to say, like, the colors and the numbers, and I would just, like, say them together to make it sound like I know how to speak when I really <laughs> didn't. And so they're, oh my God, like, that's, I've never heard anyone speak Indian before. But, like, all these white people would say that. And so, yeah, that's what we would do, like, whenever the, if we were, like, if white people were visiting the school or if we were going out to go visit, like, you know, white people or whatever, like, the Indians are coming. So, like, we had to, like, get ready and, like, prepare ourselves. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, her, her research was on, like, oh, Native student experiences, like, in the classroom and stuff. And so this woman is in the, in the group and she's Native and she, like, she spoke up afterwards and she was, like, She's like, yeah, she's like, I know my one friend, like she would go to class and she would just get bullied because, you know, um, she had really big shoulders. And she's like, cause you know, as Indian women, we have those real big shoulders. She's like, you know, those real big Buffalo shoulders. <laughs> and we're all like, uh, <laughs> she's like, she's like, you know, and they would just bully her cause we're big Buffalo shoulders. <laughs> and we're like, all of us Indian girls in the room were like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but like she just kept saying it we're like okay we get it <laughs> we get that we got big shoulders <laughs> it's so funny so that's like a joke between me and my friends now like oh you and your big buffalo shoulders <laughs> oh my god it was so funny somebody just posted something the other day and they said um she said, um, I'm mom's favorite because she used to turn my head when I was in a cradle board. She didn't turn your head, that's why your head's flat. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Traits about like native women, like we're all hips and no butt. Yeah. My friend says it's like you're washing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Ours is up for Mojave's, and so we always say that Mojave, don't look at me when I say this either. You make me feel self conscious. <laughs> Hey, look away, look away. <laughs> and so they say Mo Mojave girls are Mojave men, they have big backs, so they call them Mojave backs. Oh, really? <laughs> they say, all oh, your Mojave back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about eagles? Obviously, oh, yeah. Eagles, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, you seen that that meme where it's like a native will drive off the side of the road like looking at an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I threw up the meme right here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, put the meme in here. That's it. It's like a eagle <laughs> or a hawk. That's like I think it's funny because uh, any bird that I'll see, like if I'm driving and like a bird flies by, I'm like, oh my god, is that an eagle? And it's not even an eagle. But I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm be driving and like, is that a hawk or is that? Yeah. <laughs> like, take it into the road. <laughs> and you're like really no. trying to look. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it goes. Natives, like we don't do like self care. So like, what's meditation? Like, what's you know painting? Like, what's a hobby? Like, we don't do that stuff. <laughs> So my mom, my mom's um, half Hopi, half Mojave. And it's so funny because she is one of those people where, Raquel, where you're mentioning, like they just provide and, you know, they're very selfless people. They take care of their family. They do, they like run off zero sleep and, you know, kind of absorb all the energy from everybody else and kind of takes it on as her own. That's my mom. And, and I always want to go provide for her. And she's like, we, we tease her because they're like, you're really real Hopi mom because like she's cooking, she's cleaning, she's like, you know, all over the place. So when it comes to me living in the city, my brothers always say, you don't even have your Hopi side, you're just real Mojave, go cook. <laughs> go clean. I'm like, God, you're just lazy, they'll tell me. But it's funny because I always get all the slack from my aunties from my Hopi side and they give me the chores and the tasks um, of what they would give somebody that's like 12, 12 years old, a, girl, a young girl that's 12. But I'm like grown ass woman doing all the, all the 12 year old chores because I don't cook, I don't know how to make bread, I don't know how to do like all the things, right? That I'm supposed to be doing according to that side. And um, yeah, so I always feel very uncomfortable when I go back home to Palaka. Cause I'm always like, what am I gonna do? You know, like where are they gonna put me? What kind of shame am I gonna get today? <laughs> Yeah. that's kind of like us too like you know it's it's I think it's like kind of like instilled in us when we we're little you know you can't be lazy you're not supposed to be lazy um like my mom same thing she's like she cannot sit still like she'll sit down for like five minutes and then she's up again doing something she, like always finding something doesn't matter what it is she just has to keep going 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 and like when I go home, I'm like afraid to just sit down because <laughs> I know she's gonna get after me. Like you know, get up and do something. You know, even like when I'm like my grandma's same thing. You know, you really don't want to be lazy around your grandparents because <laughs> you know you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> so it's like you, know, you try to find stuff to do, and you know, it's just, I guess it's just that thing. You know, you can't be lazy. You gotta do something all the time. <laughs> No, yeah, I remember my grandma was alive, and that's because she raised me too. So, like, growing up, like, we're like putting up sheetrock downstairs at seven o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Like, come on, wake up! You can't sleep in, you know, like <laughs> the whole thing. And and I mean, most of the times, my brother just sat and played video games for hours. He didn't have to help us build half the house. But then, then like when she was still alive, and I would like go and stay with her, you know, for um, during my breaks during college when I was working. And I would get there and it's like, okay, get up and do this. Oh, go do this. And I'm like, grandma, I just came home to like relax. <laughs> She's like, no, you gotta help me do this. You gotta help me do this. <laughs> like it just was not in her, it was not like a thing um, for her to, and, until she found her favorite shows on Netflix, like <laughs> Shameless. She's the one who got me into Shameless. And this one time I went home and we binged like a whole season of Shameless. Grandma watched Shameless? Get out of here. <laughs> she loved it. Oh my gosh. And she loved the cooking show with Snoop Dogg and uh, Martha Stewart. I was like, yes. one of your favorite too. And so once she got that, then I was like, okay, now this is a way I can like just relax with my grandma. <laughs> That's what I want to start doing is like meditating. I've like been having some really hard time sleeping lately. I don't know if it's just like, I know it has to do with like my allergy symptoms and then like I think it's also like anxiety too. I don't know, I think I might have insomnia. I'm not a doctor, but. <laughs> I'm not a smoker, but like, um, I like went out and like got a cigarette and like smoked. And like, I'm not, I never grew up on smoking. Like I did it like here and there. Like whenever I was like at the res party, it's like I would maybe like have one here or there, but I was never like a smoker. Like I was just like trying to be cool and like smoke or whatever. 
well I don't meditate like as much but um I do like pray and stuff like that so like kind of quit like for a while and just like breathe like deep breathing I'll stop for like maybe three minutes and just like breathe and like that really helps because like I need to slow down sometimes and I get kind of overwhelmed <laughs> yeah so. no for sure maybe no that makes total sense maybe we should all try meditation and report back next week <laughs> download the app <laughs> <laughs> Make a promise that we'll do it every day for at least three minutes. Why do we brush our teeth? Always brush your teeth. Well, I don't brush my teeth every day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> You're like, I'll, <laughs> like, I'll meditate while I'm smoking my cigarette. <laughs> <laughs>one of my friends like asked me one time because all of us like live in this like two of my friends live in LA and then I live in Phoenix and and he was like asking he's like so if you guys were to tell like kids on the res like one skill that they need to like make it off the res and like live in the city and like you know like what would you tell them or what what one skill do they need and and i was like well i for me i was like i was like well i wouldn't necessarily think that like leaving the res has to be like the definition of success you know what i mean like like we still need people in our communities. We still need people who are restoring our language, who are preserving our, our culture. Like we still need those things in our community. Like, I feel like those of us who move to a city, who, you know, go to college, get an education, I feel like we're the ones who are gonna educate, you know, non-natives, or I guess we're making people more um, aware that we're still here. And then like those who are staying on the reservation, you know, a lot of them are doing like traditional, um, like weaving, for instance, like for Navajos, you know, traditional weaving, like there's silversmiths, there's, you know, artists of all sorts. And they're also passing that down to like their children or those who want to learn. So it's like, they're kind of preserving the, like the traditions and culture, like for, other indigenous like Navajos for instance but like I feel like we're kind of like taking on like we're taking on the world <laughs> in a way. <laughs> um, okay. yeah ready go uh all right code switching to me honestly I feel like it's a, a survival technique hang on a second I'm gonna Run, doggies, run! <laughs> run! The practice of alternating between two or more languages or varieties of language in conversation. That's my definition of a code switch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, to me, it was like a survival technique because, I mean, I did grow up only, like, solely, or not only in the city, but like really a mix between the reservation and the city. But I feel like the more friends I had were from the city and like were white people. So to me, uh, when I did talk like that or when I kind of got, got along and kind of didn't make something as like traditional or as like cultural, even though I really love my culture, I love culture in general, I feel like it was more like a survival, like an avoidance technique, like growing up just because like I just didn't want to I kind of wanted to like avoid topics or like avoid talking about stuff so I feel like I don't know doing stuff and then like whenever I would work at like funny story would be like when I would work at jobs like in the city I'd be the only brown person so usually they would think I was like Mexican and so or like didn't speak English and so like a lot of time um, if I were taking like an online order because I worked at like a deli or a bakery and so stop it um and so so I would answer the phone like, hi, this is Raquel, like, how can I help you? And I would like talk like, you know, white. And so they would be like, oh my God, thank you so much. But then when they showed up, they were like taken back. They were like, oh, I, they didn't think it was me on the phone. And so, uh, but I, I feel like I really used like my whiteness, I guess if, that would, if that's a thing, 
to really like get by or like to survive because if I were to submit to talking res, I know that's like talking res or talking like the people around me, then I would be, it's more of like I'm less superior, but I kind of used like code switching to like survive and like not have to deal with, even though I already do deal with it because I am brown, but it's like, it's not as harsh to me as it would have been if I had talked another way. I always think about the uh, like the uh, pro professional events that I've been to that are like native professional events. <laughs> so you know, sometimes they have like key speakers or you know people who speak in these different workshops who are non-native. And you know, when you engage with those non-natives, like after this seminar or like during like a mixer, you know you. I've used in like my professional voice with these non-natives and then like when you see all these other natives you go up to, to talk to them it's like you hear their res tone so it kind of like brings out your res tone too mm -hmm. and and then it's like when you start off your conversation and you're talking 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 and it's like the more res you you become like your your voice <laughs> And all of a sudden, you know, you're just laughing and joking. Like, you know, like you said, we're all about, you know, native, natives, we're all about humor. So it's just like having a conversation along with like joking with each other. So that's kind of an experience I've had before. So yeah, I think code switching is definitely a way of surviving. <laughs> um, and for me, I think I figured it out. Well, cause so in high school, I went to school on the res, but my res is like, there's a lot of non-natives on our res. And so actually the high school that I went to was majority non-natives. Like I could probably count on one hand how many native kids were in our high school. And it was like super small. We only had 120 kids in our whole entire high school. So it also was like very small, but, um, and so I feel like I code switched even like in high school a lot. Um, and, but when I got into college, it was like, cause that's when I started hanging out with um, people more from Brownie, like on the Black Feet Res. And so like, I used a lot more slang and I feel like I really found my identity as like a, a Indian person, you know? And, um, and then, so I feel like my code switching got way more intense when I got into college because then too, I was in more professional spaces as well. But I remember one time, um, and we were, oh, me and my cousin, we were, we were presenting and then we got done presenting. And I remember one of our, um, uh, one of our professors who was there watching us present, she was like, oh my, her comment was, Oh my gosh, you guys speak so articulate for being from the res. And um, and my cousin, he just like looked at me and I could tell he was just like so offended. And I was like, oh my God, because yeah. And we like at first, you know, when they like, because it was like a microaggression, right? But like, she's like, oh, well, I didn't mean it like that. And it's like, okay, yeah, but you're pretty much telling us that like, if we're from the res, we can't talk right, you know, like, and, um, and then like, I think my thought process at that point was like, you want to hear me talk like I'm from the res? <laughs> like, cause I can, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, like, you want me to get resy up in here? Cause I can get real resy real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you <laughs> become less articulate is that what you're telling me <laughs> i thought of code switching when it came to like the three things that i thought of was like when turquoise when you and i first met like i thought that was cool just because i was like i didn't really i was talking all professionally because i am the ex i was an executive director at the time you know so i always had to carry myself in like a professional way when i'm interviewing <laughs> but i felt when I first met Turquoise that I already knew she was Native, but I already automatically felt like I could just let my guard down right away. So that's what I feel about like code switching. I think it's more of a connection than, and relatability mm -hmm. like in that way. So that's why I think about it as a resiliency skill too. 
like they're all kind of connected in regards to identity and like that. But yeah, when I first met you and anytime I go back home, like I don't want to talk professional when I'm home. I want to like be loud and say all my slang <laughs> and, and joke around and maybe fit in some professional things within that, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I'd want to see it so my mom well okay granted my mom has like smoked cigarettes for like 45 years probably not that long but a long time so she has a really deep voice in itself um <laughs> there's this one uh or this one time well I have two stories first about my mom's voice and how deep it is but she uh this one time my dad called me and I had him on speakerphone and um my friend is in the other room and then I hung up and, and my friend was like, oh, is that your mom? And I was like, oh, no, that was my dad. My mom's voice is way deeper than that. Because <laughs> it is, like, she has a really deep, like, smoker voice, you know? But so when she, she works as a, she used to work as a paralegal in the law office, and she would, like, answer the phones all the time, you know? And me and my brother just, like, we would see her, you know, when she'd answer the phone, and it would just totally like we're like we never hear that voice like why do you do that voice and even though her voice is really deep like she'd answer the phone and she'd be like she'd be like uh it's called the ingram law office she'd be like ingram law office like super high and we would laugh her and because we're like dang, what? she's like i have to she's like i can't use my regular voice <laughs> and that's, like a, that's like a simple like a perfect example right because our boss because i worked with her at the law office one time and our boss even said that like i remember when i first started working there and he was like you have to answer the phone with a different voice so that people like you know, like, like your voice isn't good. Like you got to make your voice sound better. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, my mom can do it with her deep voice and I can do it. <laughs> I've ever gone up to a native and like thought it was going to be like, oh, like they're native. Like it's going to be like smooth. Do you guys have stories of like it not going well? Well, yeah, but I don't want to call that person out on here. <laughs> <laughs> Really, it's her name. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the whole point. So, like, yeah, when people aren't and they're just, like, super, like, reds and they're, like, they like they really act like they don't care about their job. A lot of times it's like, oh, well, you could be just a little nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, that stereotype with, like, the women who work at IHS. Like, they're just <laughs> <they're laughs> much. <laughs> <They're older. laughs> Native hair. Yeah, all those memes. It was like, it was like I can't remember what picture it was. It was like when you don't know your chart number. <laughs> yeah. like, I'll try to find it. <laughs> I guess they don't know your birthday. They rather know your sense or your real or whatever number chart number. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I remember that. Whenever I got home, like moved home and saw a psychiatrist uh, at the, the same time I was making the like next meeting with my psychiatrist she told me to get like a like a pap smear and like a, a women's exam because like I hadn't had one in so long and so she was like she's like oh just go to the desk and like um, just make an appointment just tell them that you need a pap and like they'll get you like taken care of for like our appointment and then that and so I was like oh okay and so um, I'm at like the mental health building I didn't know there was a separate building and so um, so I go up to the front desk and I'm like, oh, um, can I schedule a PAP? Like, can I get a PAP? And she, they were like, what? And I was like, you know, a PAP, like, <laughs> I, I was so, like, embarrassed. I was like, you know, like, a PAP, like, a PAP, you know, a PAP, but, like, there's, like, people in the waiting room and, like, everyone can hear me, obviously. <laughs> and, like, there, the lady was so rude, she was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, and I was like you know a pap like you don't know what a pap is like you're a lady like you don't know okay <laughs> and she was like um this is the main building this is behavioral health and I was like oh I was like okay like <laughs> I was like sorry like and then she kind of like gave me like she's like kind of gave me like a dirty look and I was like oh can you like schedule me for next week at the same time and she was like yes and I like walked out and I was like oh my god she was so rude but I was so embarrassed <laughs> oh my god I was embarrassed <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh real hard. I'm like sweaty. <laughs> I know I don't want to like laugh super oh loud because I know. Oh my god! I mean the fact that you like is that she was like, trying to make you describe what a path is. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Oh, that was too much. That's so. See, much. I did all the native laughing in one. It's <laughs> like oh, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! That's so Anytime funny. I go home now, like oh my god, everyone still like makes fun of me about that. Oh my god, that was so embarrassing. But she like she like could have told you like no, you go to this other. <laughs> <place."> yeah. <laughs> She did that on purpose. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to comment and message us if you want to share any of your stories. So we'll see you next week for Response Wednesday. Bye-bye.